So we mentioned HTTP and HTTP verbs previously. What exactly is an HTTP verb? Uh, so HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol, and it has verbs. You'll be happy to know. The first one we'll be talking about is git. So the best way to explain this is with an example. Um, if you were to be talking to your computer in English and you said, get me the Rails project from GitHub, you would be looking at a URL similar to this, github.com slash rails slash rails. And we would be making a git request to um, GitHub. What if you wanted to say, get me the tweets from user Schneems on Twitter? Well, you would go to a browser and you would type in twitter.com slash Schneems and you'd hit enter. And that is going to issue a git request to Twitter. So git requests ask for data, but they do not modify data on the server. So in general, Git does not modify the server. So Git does not modify the server. We're gonna have a quick question here. Do Git requests modify data on the server? No, no, they do not. Hopefully you got that one right. All right, uh, let's, uh, let's Again, take a look at a couple of different examples of HTTP types of requests that we can make and ask you whether or not they are Git requests. So the first one is going to be typing a URL into a browser. Do you think this is an example of a Git request? Well, uh, whenever you type something into the browser, you're essentially just asking your browser if you can have that information. So here we're looking at the hypertext transfer protocol URL from Wikipedia. Whenever you hit enter, yes, that will just submit a simple Git request. We're not modifying any data on the server. What about clicking on a link? Whenever you Google something, you get a, a series of links. Is that going to be modifying data on the server? Is that a Git request? Well, whenever you click on that link, it does make a Git request. And I say normally because there are some fancy things we can do, do with JavaScript to make it not a Git request, but nine times out of 10, just clicking on links does issue a Git request. What about posting a status update onto Facebook? Here we are typing in, I'm thinking about my Ruby class and we're gonna hit post. You know, is that gonna modify data on a server? Is that gonna be a, a Git request or not? So that scenario is not going to be a Git request. We are actually sending data to the server and the state of the server will be modified. So whenever that happens, it is not a Git request. But it does introduce the concept. Uh, luckily enough, um, in this example, even Facebook calls the button a post um, of posting. HTTP has another verb called post. So you can post changes to a server and that's gonna change the state of the server. An example of this would be post my status update to Twitter and you're actually sending data to, uh, to Twitter in that scenario. After the post, the server has more information than it did before. Um, a good way to remember this is that the post changed the state of our server. If uh, if something is different on the server after the post, uh, after the request, then likely it is a, uh, a post if we're creating a resource. So, like we played a git request or not, let's play post request or not. We have signing up for a service. We're going to be creating a user account. Um, we're going to be sending our full name, our email, city, state, and password, as well as password confirmation. If you said yes, you're right. What about signing in? We're going to be sending um, our email and our password. So this is a little bit of a, of a tricky one. Um, we aren't necessarily creating a new user on our server. We're not necessarily modifying the state of the database, but we are modifying the state of the server uh, it, it knows whether the person is logged in or not. So yes, you would generally do that via a post request. Um, some, someone in class also pointed out that it is 
also likely a lot of login systems have this uh, scenario where they keep track of your last login time to see if there's any any um, malicious activity, um, especially like banking websites. And so in that scenario, especially we would be um, issuing a post request and actually saving data onto our server. Posts are usually initiated by a web form. This is an example of a web form. We've got just a, a text entry box and a submit button here. And um, we're on Twitter, so we're gonna if we tweet that out, that would be an example of a post. But there are exceptions. Here we have Google, and Google has a form, a big, big form at the very top. It's got a text entry bar as well as a um, submit button. Um, notice we have a bunch of different types of styled submit buttons. And um, in this scenario, we're not posting information because when you when you search for something, you're not modifying the state of Google um, by default. Um, in, in this scenario, we're searching for StarCraft and we are asking to get information about StarCraft back. We, are, we, are, we don't care if, you know, even if Google does save our search um, to help with type ahead search or something along later, that wasn't the intent of the original request. So this would be an example of a Git request. In general, um, search is based on a form but doesn't uh, change the state of the server. So we will be uh, using Git requests for those. So in general, if you want to figure out if you are issuing a Git request or a post request, it, uh, for post, you can ask, are you adding something to the server? If the answer is yes, then it is a post request. If you are asking, are you requesting for data? Are you looking for data? Um, not l looking to change anything on the server, then that is normally a Git request. Um, a real world example, a physical example I like to think of is if you're going to uh, check for mail, then you're getting your mail. But whenever you send out a card, you are posting mail. So we're actually sending out data over the, um, you know, over our post network, our postal service network. Uh, all right, so that was a introduction to um, URL as well as our HTTP verbs, which make up routes. We're actually going to split off this next section so the video doesn't get too long. Just continue on to the next uh, video and you can watch how we put together um, our URL as well as our HTTP verb to create routes.